Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the <coughs> Quincy School Committee Policy Subcommittee meeting for September 22nd. We have um, three hours and four minutes of fall, uh, summer left, so let's enjoy it. Um, we have two uh, items on the agenda this evening. The first is the high school promotion and graduation requirements uh, cited in the um, uh, book 9.11.5, and we're proposing uh, revising the existing policy. Um, we have before us the, um, the new policy that is proposed, so I, I assume everybody's had a chance to look it over. And are there any questions on any of the edits or changes? Mr. Gutro. Can somebody walk us through the changes? So we had an existing, this is an existing policy uh, that hadn't been updated in several years. Um, so I compared the text in here um, to the text that's in the program of studies booklet. Um, and so basically the majority of the changes are editing the language clarity, um, the points, you know, the point structure and the number of courses, none of those things have changed. Uh, the wording was different than the original policy, so I included the changes in kind of like in the program of studies. Book. Um, and then the community service section uh, at the end had actually never been formalized in the policy book. Um, and so I created that language and made it very specific to address the fact that we've waived community service for the last three school years. Um, and so that each class would have a clear understanding of the requirements. This year's freshmen would go back to the regular cycle. Um, would go back to the regular cycle um, of 30 hours. It doesn't sound like the microphone's it working. Like the microphone. It is on. He's looking at us. Like on. Off. It says off. It says on. They're all on a minute ago. I put them all okay, on. Okay, so can you? Okay, now? Okay. Yep, now. Okay, so yes, yeah, so for community service, just very specific information for each class that's currently in high school, um, so that the current seniors have basically um, been credited with the community service they were not able to perform during COVID-19. Uh, this year's juniors would have to do 10 hours, uh, the sophomores will do 10 hours this year and 10 next year, and the current ninth graders would do 10 hours each year, ninth, 10th, and 11th grade, as had been our practice. Um, and then the only correction, correction, which would be a correction also for the program of studies booklet, which is what the parents and students receive, is that the physical on the first page, I think it is, um, that the physical education requirement, so it's number two under academic credits, the physical education requirement is actually a state law. So I just changed the language to um, make, that, make that clear. Any other questions? Mrs. Lebo. Yeah, have we heard from the uh, coordinators of community service if they think that the world has opened up enough for us to be requiring this? So I definitely talked to the two principals who I've, who I've spoken to, um, our community service coordinators, and as far as I know, they're, <clears throat> they're ready to go. Okay. So. All right. That's my only question. I, I, I just as a... Point of information. I know some kids who, uh, before we took away the requirements, had done community service and had submitted their uh, 10 hours or so mm -hmm. uh, prior to us suspending. So those are still going to be held by those coordinates, correct? Correct. Those were all credited. And anything that was completed in t up till March 2020 when school closed, I believe we went back and made sure everybody was credited for that. So any other questions on any of these changes or amendments? Just a point of procedure. Yeah, Mr. Santoro. Once we, um, once you approve this and it comes out of subcommittee, I assume it has to go before the full committee for then, for the public to know mm -hmm. that we are now once again requiring community service, correct? Correct. Yes. correct. Yes. Thank you. So after the, it'll be on the agenda <clears throat> for the meeting next Wednesday? But not for a vote. I'm sorry, yeah, so for, right, so it'll be there as old business. Then I post it on the website 
to say this is a policy change that the school committee is going to vote on at the next meeting. And then we'll vote on October 12th. Can I, just one last question, and it, it doesn't exclusively relate to this, um, uh, Mr. Santoro, and we were talking before about the next item that's on the agenda, but can you just walk through the different vehicles through which this information comes out? In other words, there's the policy book, there's the program of studies, is there a handbook? Like, how many different places do you look for that there can be discrepancies in language. What, where, what are they and who do they go to? I think those are the three places that you mentioned. So the program of studies, that undergoes a really a regular review every year. And is that a lot of people. District and wide? Is that school by school? Is district that wide. District it's district for the wide. two high schools. Yep. It's for the two high schools. Just and for the it's two used high. during the course selection process. Yep. Um, that information is also on the website, on the high school websites. Um, and then the handbooks, Mr. Santor had, had also had mentioned that to me, that the hand, we have to make sure that the handbooks also. And those go to students and parents thing. too? The handbooks as well, yes. And, and you look at the handbooks and, and that's really conduct? And the other is curriculum? So why, why would I, look, as a parent, look at those two, which, you know, and for what purposes am I looking at? The program at of studies really is strictly for course selection and for people understanding the yep. process, you know, towards graduation. And then the Rights and Responsibilities Handbook has other things in addition, but it also has this outline of the graduation requirements. The, the third thing mm -hmm. is our policy manual. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Which is probably the least referred to, I would say, by parents. Thank you. No, sir. Okay. Anyone else? I, I just have one quick question. We have um, we have the uh, handbooks on some agenda, some subcommittee to be reviewed soon anyway, don't we, the process? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Would we have a motion to approve the uh, high school promotion and graduation requirements? Move approval. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Gutro, seconded by Ms. Hubley. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that will go on to the um, mm -hmm. next school committee meeting? Yes. Second uh, item on the agenda is uh, Clinton Public Schools cell phone usage policy for students. Uh, the proposed establishment of a policy section book nine. Uh, and we again have a, uh, a draft before us uh, put together again by Superintendent and uh, Ms. Zowens. Um, it's been a concern of, um, I know, teachers and principals. Uh, it's been an ongoing concern. And um, something I brought up uh, a year or so ago, and I know the mayor is someone who's in favor of uh, getting some type of policy in place. So uh, any discussion, any questions about uh, the policy you read? Uh, Ms. Hubley. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, on here, there are just a few things I picked out. So on here it says headphones. Do we need to write in earbuds, any other specific type of things? Sure. Would that be yes. yep. needed? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also um, on the last section, I mean, on, I believe there should be a section in here that says unless otherwise noted in a student's for 504 or IEP for classroom um, necessity um, as approved by the teacher. Mm -hmm. Is that after the number three? I would say, yeah, after number three, maybe a number four. Sure. Anybody, um, anybody have a question on I, that? Uh, no, I, I agree with what she's saying, but I don't think it should be approved by the teacher. I think that there should be something a little more official, and it could maybe it might be the nurse. Because okay. there are diabetics who use their cell phone to gauge how mm -hmm. much insulin they have to give exactly. themselves. So it might, but it needs to be somebody responsible and not a teacher having to make that decision on her own or his own in a classroom full of kids. That's a good point. Okay. So I'd love, rather it was a specialist of some sort in there that would make that dis dis decision. So it yeah. could be the um, building principal or his or her designee. Um, that may be the that language you would want. Better, that. that might be better, yeah. Okay. Can we amend that uh, mm -hmm. to include this? Uh, and Mr. Bergoli, I have one other question. I, okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't finished. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
on the second offense part, it says a student, parent, or guardian will be called in and the device will be returned to them. Should we need to specify that who would be returned to when we say them? Is we referring to the guardian. parent or guardian? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and then this, I'm just, just for people that are going to just not understand the exact wordage, um, students committing repeated violations of this policy may be subject to additional disciplinary actions cons consistent within the student's rights and responsibilities handbook. What are those? Yeah. We don't say what they are. So it would, it would really fall under probably the, uh, like an insubordination because obviously they're continuing to not um, follow the rules, but we can put together more specific language if you want. I mean, it would be basically student insubordination, failure to follow the school rules, essentially. But um, if you want more specifics. I mean, I, I'm asking for myself, too. Like, what, yeah. what would that fall under? What would, what would the fourth... They do this over and over and over and over again. The parents come in, they get the phone. Oh, you mean what would the penalty be? What would it be? What would happen on the That's fourth That's really, time? I mean, it could be anything from, I've seen in other policies, the cell phone is prohibited from use for the remain for a longer period of time all the way up to including the remainder of the school year. But... Um, that's certainly something that the policy could state if that's yeah. what you wanted it to state. There are some policies we've taken a look at where uh, subsequent violations do result in the cell phone being banned for the remainder of the school year. And then there can be something less than that. And, and, and banned in, in what sense? I mean, not be able to bring it to school, so, not be able to bring it to school. So how do we enforce that? How do we know if a kid has that cell phone on his person? when he uh, comes to school. I mean, he, he could have it, and if he doesn't use it during the school day or whatever. It would be, it would be as we always, we would depend upon the teacher and administrator, the principal, to make sure that that's enforced. Yeah, I guess it just it seems like a no-teeth policy. That's what I'm seeing. It's like, mm -hmm. kind of like, if they're not going to, okay, you can't bring it to school, or else we see it, you can't have it, and then they're mm -hmm. going to just bring it to school the next day. Well, the okay, alternative, we're going to see it, we give it back to your yeah. parent again, and then I'm just going to bring it the next day. I mean, you could get into the realm so. of suspending a student for bringing, um, for continuing violations. That could be part of the policy if, if that's what you wish. We have, there have been some policies we've taken a look at, not necessarily Massachusetts, but in other states where a suspension was imposed for continuing violations. Mm -hmm. So obviously that would be a suspension from school. Well, if that's the case, I think it should be in building and not out of building. Mm -hmm. Because then they miss academic time. I mean, they can. They are still. It's still. It's still technically considered a suspension, yes. even if it's in building. Right. Because they're not in their normal cycle of classes. Correct. If they're not out of school and doing whatever they want. So the. Suspension is a possibility if that's, you know, if that's what you want to see in the policy. Yeah. With, with, and with these amendments, are we going to be able to bring this forward? Or do we have to do, do this all over again? Yeah, we'd have to talk about that at a subsequent policy meeting. Okay. We have another one scheduled um, for October 19th. I'd like to see this on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Mr. Well, I think Kathy's got the floor. And, then and I think these guys are on the committee, yeah. so he does. I, I had a whole bunch of questions. Okay. okay. Kathy's still got it. So. I'm all set. Thank you. That was all okay. I How many questions do you have, Mr. Santoro? That's right. I'll yield to Mr. Gattro. Okay. No, uh, I'll Gattro yield Gattro. to the folks not on the committee. So, um, so I have a whole bunch of different questions about this. Um, five years on the school <clears throat> committee, zero calls, zero emails about this. Five years as a parent, going to meet with my, my son's teachers, no teacher has ever brought it up to me as being an issue. Um, <coughs> has QEA raised this as an issue to you formally in writing? Uh, not formally in writing, but in our, um, the meetings that we've had with teachers um, over the last couple of years, this has been one of the top. Do you have a survey? We do not. Can we do a survey? 
We certainly could. Can we do a parent survey? Yes. Yeah. The um, so. Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out what the impetus is because, you know, during the pandemic, we got a lot of calls about a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. I didn't get calls about phones, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or any of that. Maybe we're back in the classroom. It's right, a different sure. world. Yeah. But, you know, and I know a lot of students actually work with their teacher and use the phones as a tool, you know, a, a teaching tool mm -hmm. as well. And, and, you know, discretion of the teacher, I think, is an important issue. The, um, the policy talks about it often a source of disciplinary in interventions. So I would like a list of disciplinary interventions by school on phone-related issues. If we could get that. Um, the, the other presentation that we haven't had is how is this managed today? District-wide, school by school, you know, any emails that you have from principals on the issue that have risen? Yeah, I would love to say, you know, I, I've sat through five years of school improvement plan meetings with principals, never came up as, as being an issue. I'm just mm -hmm. looking for the groundswell that I haven't heard. And maybe it's out there. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe folks watching at home tonight will begin to email us and call us and people will have opinions. You know, um, so those are the things that I'm interested in. The parent survey, the teacher survey, mm -hmm. the, the disciplinary issues around it. Um, you know, I mean, I feel strong as a parent, and we've talked about this, Mr. Superintendent, you know, last year there was a pretty significant incident that took place at North Quincy High School, scared the daylights out of a lot of the kids who had no idea what it was. The school went in lockdown. That was my lifeline to my son that was there. Mm -hmm. He was scared. He was texting me. He was communicating with me on the phone. Super important to have that lifeline, you know? I mean, I ultimately went. I was outside the school waiting for it all to happen. But that ability to communicate with my son at an important time mattered to me. So I'm just trying to figure out if we're solving a problem that isn't a, a gigantic problem here and that are we saying that the discretion of the principals or the, whatever the policy they have in every school, and, and again, I don't know what the policy is mm -hmm. because I haven't heard anybody call to complain about it. Is, it. is it completely at the discretion of the principals? Do they do it? Are certain principals saying that it's not, a, it's an issue? And, and it would be j just useful because I have no data from, from anybody that's raised it as an issue to me as just one member of this body. Okay. We can certainly do surveys. Um, the current the, the current handling of cell phones at the elementary level, it's not an issue. Cell phones are not used in the classroom. Same with middle school. They're not permitted in all of the uh, classrooms in the middle school. And now at the high school, um, the principals have started the year communicating to the students that cell phones would only be permitted at uh, lunch break and study. So is it... Is it a letter that you wrote to the principals of middle schools? And I mean, how is it all? The principals. So how did they know, or did they just come together and they use their own discretion? The principals, in conjunction with their staff, have definitely determined that cell phone use during class is a distraction. And so where are the so where do the phones go when you walk into an elementary or middle school? So um, the for high school, they the students can have the phones on them. Yeah. They just have to keep them put away. Uh, and silenced uh, so that they're not a distraction. Uh, middle schools, they keep their phones in the locker. Elementary schools, um, it's, uh, it's really hasn't been an issue in the elementary schools. Many students at the elementary level don't have them. Don't have them. Yeah. Um, if they have them, typically they're in their backpack. Uh, but again, they're not um, going off typically or being used mm -hmm. at the elementary level. Certainly not being used in the classroom. The teachers wouldn't. Permit. So you, you don't. Is what you're saying? There's not a problem in the middle schools or the elementary schools. Correct. That's this is saying. really. So the you're issue. saying the policy in place, whatever it may be, whoever wrote it is working in those schools. That's correct. And the policy is no cell phones okay. in the classrooms at the middle schools, and certainly not at the elementary okay. schools. Okay. So this, although it doesn't say it, this is really targeting the high schools. Yeah, uh, it would be all schools, but yeah, but uh, the problem that we currently have right now. Okay. Uh, at least from our principals, 
that are telling us and our teachers are telling us is that cell phones in the classroom okay. with regard to students texting um, and not paying attention in class is a real problem. Got it. Yeah, any, so any, any written anything on this, I'd, lo I'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, 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 not more than just hallway conversations or well, whatever. Because yeah. they, they have the opportunity annually to come before us and talk about any issues that, that are concerns at the school. And I, I just haven't heard it, so. I think the survey, particularly the uh, teacher survey, will be eye-opening. I think um, what you'll see is a pretty high percentage of our teachers, particularly at the high school level, saying that cell phones in the classrooms are a distraction to learning. Could we see a draft of the survey before it goes out? Sure. On the questions, that'd be good. Sure. Thank you. Mrs. Lebo. So, um, I first of all, I want to say that I, I, unlike Mr. Gatcher, I've heard from tons of teachers because I worked with the teachers and they know me and I see them all the time socially and they said that this is an enormous problem. And it became that way because of the pandemic when everything was sort of opened up and people were on Zoom and people were in school and on Zoom because the teacher wasn't there and nobody really knew what was going on and it really got out of control and that every kid in the classroom, and they said even in the corridors, they walked down the corridors like this, not even paying attention to what's going on in the room. So I, I would like to suggest, I'm fine with both of those surveys, Mr. Volby, but mm -hmm. I would like to see the parent survey done first, I mean the, the student survey done first, to inform the parents mm -hmm. what it's like with teachers before we ask the parents what they think. Yeah, because I really think we need to get a, a handle on what's actually going on in the I buildings. Could, yeah, I, I, so I, I just said parent, and teacher, but student is definitely like three well, surveys. Whatever. No, that would be I just excellent. think we should get the teacher's yeah. information first. Teacher's first. Yes, and before we give anybody else a survey so we can present that information so that people will understand what it's like. Uh, and I also think if we do the student survey, the high schools now, both of them, are much more clamped down on the phones than they have been before. Absolutely, they are. Uh, and I'm hearing that from kids and parents. So I think, I think that um, we might ask the kids how they feel about it because mm -hmm. is it better in school? Mm -hmm. I, I have a question about the Chromebooks, though. Are the Chromebooks always working if a teacher wants them to be working? They should be. And so the kids carry a, their whole, whole Chromebooks back and forth? Yes. So, so, we, the, so at the high schools um, and middle schools, students should have their own Chromebooks. We have Chromebook carts at the elementary schools when they need it at the elementary schools. Um, but if there is any Chromebook that's not working, obviously we have Irvin Matzos, a full-time person staffed here that will that is fixing. Well, do our we Chromebook. have like a substitute Chromebook? In the oh classroom? yes, we have. So like if plenty. The, if two kids didn't have a Chromebook or it wasn't working, we have plenty in the classroom. They can turn it in to be fixed, okay. and they can swap out for a loaner. Okay, so all Quincy Public School students have not been issued a Chromebook because K through three have not been issued. That's so that's that correct. shouldn't say that in here. So. They, there are Chromebook carts, though, right, at the elementary. Right, but they haven't all been issued. I just want, I just yeah. want their language to so be So in, in building, if they needed a Chromebook, they have yeah, access they have, to okay, it. Yeah. And um, I would not be happy with a in-built. First of all, I don't even think there are still in-building suspension rooms, are there? Yes. I'm not sure. There are? Yeah. Uh, there are sometimes in-building suspensions, yes. But I, I would not be happy with a child being kept out of their classroom for anything. I think there has to be some other way of doing it. So would you suggest to send them home for this? I wouldn't, su I wouldn't suggest suspension because I think that's, uh, I don't know what I'd suggest. But I worry about, you know, and, and plus, you know, you know how many suspensions we might get out of this? Initially. You know, our schools are going to be judged by the amount of people we're suspending. Initially. So I, I think we have to think of it. Maybe we could hear from the principals too and think about some other consequences mm -hmm. that could mm -hmm. take place mm -hmm. that would would be more appropriate, or but I, I worry about the suspension mm -hmm. issue. Mrs. Santoro and then Mrs. Cahill. I have a problem with the implementation. We put our teachers in a terrible situation because what happens is, let me have your cell phone. No. They walk away. Teacher's not going to grab the phone or the child. So what we do is, is we put our staff and administration in a terrible situation with the policies we come up with because they can't be enforced. Mm -hmm. There needs to be another bullet here. If the child refuses to turn over their cell phone, what's the punishment? Because I've been there. I've taken them to the door. Cell phone or door? If you choose door, don't. you need to come <coughs> back with a parent. And I said this before, some kids never come back. 
the problem is in the implementation. We currently have the policy at Quincy High in the handbook. I know because I was part of it. It states, the use of electronic devices is subject to the terms and conditions as set forth in the acceptable use policy. That's the same as North Quincy, by the way. Found in Appendix K of this handbook, the use of electronic devices such as iPads, iPods, and cell phones is permitted with the approval and supervision of a staff member. The use of such devices, however, is prohibited in the hallway during passing times. Devices used without the approval will be confiscated and returned. Parents will be called to retrieve the items of the chronic violators. Continuous violations will result in dis disciplinary action. Failure to turn over said items will result in suspension and re-entry hearings with the principal. If you do not have the punishment for the person who says no, <laughs> it's senseless to have the policy. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Scale. Well, this is a valuable discussion because I have heard from parents who are, who are concerned about, you know, the distraction of cell phones. And if we all want to be honest, I think we are all distracted by our cell phones. I mean, I, I just bought a device that I can lock my phone up when I'm working so I'm not distracted by texts or, you know, emails or I have like five emails on my phone, different accounts and stuff for different things. So um, I did a little bit of research and looked at different places that have banned or have a plan around the use of cell phones in the classroom. And there is a lot of data that, that shows that academic achievement is not as high as it could be because of the distractions of phones. The other thing is um, social impact, you know, mental health, things like that. Unwarranted unwar um, videos of kids, other students, then sharing them on social media, things that happen in school. Um, some of it, you know, banning them, I think keeping them in a, in, when you're in an academic setting in your bag so that if there is an emergency, you know, something happening in the school and the kid wants to get in touch with their parents, it can be in their bag or it's someplace close to them. But I think that um, if we're really concerned about what our kids are learning in, um, in the classroom and if we're really concerned about the distraction and the effects that they're using phones for other things and bullying and things like that, I think we have to look at this and, and come up with a plan that makes sense. And if we don't have a policy that is, states everything clearly and, you know, take our time and think about what are the, some of the ramifications for these kids, you know, we have to have it written so a parent's not going to say, well, it doesn't say you're going to suspend my child. You know, what is that going to be? So I don't think we have to rush. I think we have to continue the discussion you know, write things down, come up with some ideas, listen to, I mean, having a, a, a survey is great, you know, because then we can see really what people are thinking, like you said, and the teachers who are in the classroom. I can't imagine. I mean, I know people that have meetings, professional business meetings, and they'll have a basket at the door for people to put their phone in the, in the basket so that they can have a discussion without the distraction of people looking at their phone. And I'm sure it's the same thing in a classroom. I mean, to Frank's you know, point, it's hard to, we have to make sure we put things in place that we can enforce as best as we can. And there's always going to be the outlier that's going to fight back on all of that. And then we're going to have to figure out policy-wise exactly how to deal with that. And, and suspension, you know, might probably isn't the answer because like you said, the, again, the ramifications to our system for suspensions, you know, maybe that, that person can never bring their phone in. It has to be locked up in the building when they come and go. You get it back when you leave. You know, something like that. I don't know. But I think we have to have the discussion and just keep on nailing and hammering it away until we get it to a point where we think it's, it's acceptable to the teachers, the people, the principals, and then um, parents. And I think we'll hear a lot from parents who, if they're concerned about what their kids are learning and concepts and things like that, that they have to be paying attention to, you know, they're going to probably agree with us. So that's that's my thought. Anyway, Thank you. Mrs. Yeah, um, I also wanted to agree that I have also heard from teachers and parents um, on this as well, and also um, school committee members from other towns. This isn't just a Quincy thing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
other, other towns that have passed similar policies about cell phone banning. Uh, and one thing um, one person was telling me the other day is that they've actually seen a correlation once they've um, had their policy in place with less vaping in the schools because there's not as much communication between the students in class to meet in the bathrooms. So they've had less um, bathrooms being occupied by vaping lately. Bring that up. Mrs. Levo. I was just wondering if we could hear from the principals too. I mean, to Mr. Santoro's point, what about in the cafeteria? How, how many people are supervising the cafeteria and how many kids are in there that they could possibly know? Who's doing what? I mean, are there, are there, are there places where it's okay to use your, do any of the other schools have places where, like at the lunch, you can use your phone? Currently, mm -hmm. the, they're allowing the use of cell phones at lunch and at, during studies. Mm -hmm. at, at our high at schools? both high schools. But otherwise, um, it's not permitted in the class unless the teacher permits it for use in a classroom assignment or something like that. Um, but but again, we've been pushing the use of the Chromebooks instead. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to give teachers some flexibility in allowing the phones for use in like a lab or um, a math class for calculator use or something like that. And I like, I like the, I mean, I think it's fair to, I also think it's fair to allow the kids to have their phone if at lunchtime or they have a free time of their own to be able to check in and see what, you know, with their friends or whatever it is that they do on, on their phone. But um, it, again, I think the biggest piece is academic achievement, right? I do. You know? and, and the social impact is huge also. But I also think that most parents are going to recognize that they can't get their kids' attention. <laughs> when they have their phones out either, so that they may not mind the fact that, but I would like to see how the teacher, because the, the teachers I heard from were really, really struggling last year with the phones, really struggling. Mm -hmm. and, and when we've reviewed the policies, some school districts are no usage, you know, from 7.30 in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon on the campus, and others do allow lunch and study. And it will be usage. interesting to see how it's working with our principals the way they're doing right. it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely the bigger cities, Boston, Worcester, Springfield, have the complete ban. Mm -hmm. Chicopee, interesting. Chicopee has the, the pouches, the magnetic pouches, mm -hmm. so the students don't, have, don't even have access um, to the phones in, in any way. It gets unlocked when you're leaving the building. And I think, I think that might be a little bit drastic because, I mean, maybe to um, Mr. Gutro's point, if there is an emergency, I, I kind of sometimes I feel like having kids having their phone in the school and there is an emergency, it can create more anxiety for parents and families because the kids just call on their parent and they don't really know what's happening where the school might have things under control and it just creates more panic. But um, I think what we'll... What we might find is that parents would like their child to have the ability to have the phone there in case there was some kind of an emergency for them. There was a, a recent incident at Quincy High School, and uh, I know firsthand that some students, they said to the students, it's an emergency, Le just leave your bag here. You're not, we're not mucking around you. That's what the teachers say all the time. Just exit the building, mm -hmm. you know, going through your bag. And so a lot of kids left their cell phones in their building so because they're not supposed to. Yeah, to that point, Mrs. Lebo, we actually spoke with the police department on that issue. So we're going to make sure that um, it's communicated uh, school-wide that um, when there is a situation like that where the school is being evacuated, uh, they're going to be told to take their belongings with them, yeah. the belongings right. that, they, that have they have with, with them. them there. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. And take it Absolutely. with them out. So that will be communicated. A lot of kids didn't have their phones so yeah. out, out when they were out there. It's important. Yeah, and I was just going to say, so I'll, I'll keep an open mind going forward. I'm, I'm interested in the surveys, but the what we have before us, and I know um, that we have the luxury of changing it, it says may not be used for any purpose on school grounds except, and it just says after school or sports activities only with permission and evening activities. So a lot of the things that you just talked about that the schools already permit, calf study, lunch, lab, or whatever, you know. It, th those exemptions don't exist in what's before us. And just that voice from parents, teachers, students w would help us carve out where it's safe and reasonable. And Yeah, the document before you yeah, is just the first draft. Yeah. Right. So uh, we intend it to be yeah. s significantly modified one way or the other. 
Yeah, and, I, and you know, I mean, I am ultimately concerned. It would be good to get feedback on on the uh, the discipline around it. You know, everything that Emily and, and others have talked about. You know, how, how do we manage that? How do you do that if the if the student won't give up the phone? And then is it a, sus a suspension worthy thing? And what what are the other consequences that could be equally significant. But yeah, I mean, you don't want to have to have them to show up at the principal's office every day to drop a phone, you know, uh, depending on, how, I don't, again, how big of a deal is this? I, I, I've got no data on how big of a deal this is. So when we get the, um, the list of disciplinary interventions, we'll get, a, we'll get a sense as to how big of a deal it is. So. I think a good way to avoid a suspension in the case where children do not comply with any of the steps would be to require a parent conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that that's. I think that alone mm -hmm. would deter kids from not following the rule. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's a good answer. To require a parent conference yeah. if you mm -hmm. refuse to turn over your phone. We can oh, build yeah. that into the yeah. policy. I like that. This is okay. I think I, refusing to turn. Do we even have so like a record of disciplinary action if we don't really have a set policy? Like a lot I of do. students who have who have been, you know had disciplinary actions due to the phone um, um, activity. It's in, it's in Aspen. Yeah, we should be able to. We, we, yeah, like we've had we a lot of that. That's what I'm saying. Like together. it's been a it's been a big enough issue that we have a like a, yes. a record of it. It, pro it pro probably what's in Aspen doesn't capture like 100%, mm -hmm. but significant that. issues that have involved cell phones would definitely be noted. So, in the so what would data. be a, what would be an example of a, a, a student being written up for disciplinary action now um, without this policy kind of in place. A lot part of uh, cell phone discipline, and it goes into, um, it, it overlaps as it could go into bullying. So for instance, um, a student takes a picture of another student and then uploads it with negative or derogatory commentary about that student. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's generated through the cell phone in school, in school. which mm -hmm. is a total disruption. And it also is another example of so how social media negatively impacts the school. Um, but that would be just one example mm -hmm. of how cell phones are used to uh, cause a disruption within the school. And those, 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 that would be an example of what would come up against uh, in, yes. in school. Okay. I also just would like to say that I've had communications with uh, teachers and students um, regarding uh, cell phone use in schools and one of the things that has, that has not been brought up is the fact that, um, and I confirmed it with students, that um, there's a lot of um, cheating going on uh, with cell phone use in the classrooms, uh, where students are taking pictures of tests um, and then forwarding them to the uh, students who are following them uh, into that particular class. Mm -hmm. uh, and I asked students if that does happen, they, and they affirmed that it does. I'm not saying it's it's uh, rampant, but it, but it is an issue. And uh, I talked to some teachers who said that uh, some of the students are taking pictures of teachers uh, in the classroom. Mm. And uh, I think that's uh, totally inappropriate. And uh, teachers have a hard enough job as mm -hmm. it is without being filmed by a student. Um, and then God knows what they're gonna do with that, with that film or the, that picture. Mm -hmm. um, I know that when I coached, um, I used to have to tell the girls when they walked through the door, if they're on the cell phone, to put their cell phones away. Because it's almost like they're attached to their ears. Um, they just can't get, they, it, it's such a habit for them. Um, it's a, some, it becomes such a part of them that it, it just, you just have to remind them all the time. You can't use your cell phones in practice. So, so th those are just a couple of other examples. And I, uh, I'm concerned about the, the, uh, the cheating and the picture taking of us, uh, of teachers. So in particular, anybody else on the committee like to have something or add before we uh, adjourn? So where, where are we leaving this, Mr. Burley? Well, I think we're going to uh, get a couple of um, surveys out, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the suggestions that were made to amend some of the language in here and add 
I think that's going to be put in by Superintendent and Mrs. Owens. Uh, and then we'll reconvene this subcommittee and uh, take a look at that information. Could we have the principals come to one of those meetings, sir? Just to. I don't see why not. We certainly, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I, I really, I feel strongly about getting the information from the teachers before we, before we do move out to the bigger. I, I agree with you, Emily. Yep. So that'll be the first survey we get out, and we'll send you the survey before we send it. Thank you. All right, I'm good. And and this is exclusively high school, right? When we communicate it, or are we surveying? I think we should broadly. survey broadly. Okay. Obviously, the survey will indicate where the, the you know the, the responses. So the teachers at the high school, the teachers at the middle school, the Good. teachers at the elementary. It'll indicate the level in which the responses are coming in. Okay, great. Anybody else? No. Nope. Thank you, everybody. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.